right, uh, welcome back to the studio. So I have with me here Mr. Sonia Kibashi, who is the editor of the National Daily Newspaper. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and that is a Tony RJ, editor for the Recorder NG. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, we've seen the report. The former president, Lucia uh, Novasaje, uh, has said so much. Well, before we go deep into part of the things he has addressed, uh, today happens to be the 10th day of the hashtag and bad government protest. Yeah, so today is the 10th day, which is supposed to be the final day of the protest. Well, let me get your views. I mean, looking at from day one to day 10, what was your, um, how did you say it? How, I don't know what best to put the question, but I'm sure you hear what I'm saying here. Yeah. So looking at it, what was your assessment? Like, were you happy? Were you satisfied with how you went? Were you dissatisfied with how, you know, the government came in and all of that? So let's, let's start with you, Mr. Tony. I'm happy with, um, yeah, it was important. Yeah, it was important. We got to have done that right. Yes, you know. It's supposed to be a very good thing. If you are disenchanted or uh, you're not happy with the way things are going in the country, you have every right to protest. You know, you have every right to protest. And the situation where whereby you want to stand up and say you don't have that right, that's where really, you know it it it, it, it causes crisis. Because you know it cannot tell me not to cry. You know, I have an issue with the way you're running your policy. That you are there, or a few of you are, 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 you know, at the end of affairs, or our leaders, doesn't make you far better than me. You know, if, you know, if it was possible, all of us would die. You know, but there be chaos. So it was structured in a way that some people will represent us while we watch. So when, while you're there, try and do your best to the people. I don't feel, I don't feel, now I'm here, I can do, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. So when we now rise and tell you, okay, you are not doing this thing right. The state does not belong to you. Remember, you were elected, you know, to do things right for us. We have an idea, but we can't, we are not there, so you are there representing us. So you have every right to correct you when you, when you I mean, when you get off the track. <laughs> so we're supposed to. It's, it's, our, it's our constitutional right to protest. What I will not subscribe to is rioting, vandalism, and looting. You know, stealing of, um, you know, destruction of public properties and all that. That I will not subscribe to. But you cannot tell people not to protest over bad governance. So I support it. I support it. And today, well, I, I, saw, I saw them yesterday when they said they want to do I know the government don't allow them to do that today. You know, you know, I've never seen it before. But people do not have the right to protest. Let's not I know where they're coming from. Let's not forget that the president eventually gave a speech. You get a good Let's not forget that. He gave a speech. I have not seen anybody say, who has said so far, he's satisfied with his speech, his speech was standing, he appealed, he mean, he answered our people. He did not he did not even listen to the demands of the people, of the protesters. They listed lines of demands. He only said, well, take, okay, we've done this, we take it. He did it. He was just reading as we were in the period. You know, I was disappointed. Seriously, <laughs> the, the president, president is someone expected to take the ball from where we are do better compared to because last administration was a disaster. So we're expecting much from him. You know, also when he said the president released that uh, statement, that the president was, you know, he addressed the nation the night. I look forward to it. I jumped over because I want to follow him up. You know? Listen, that I, I came out disappointed. Nothing tangible. Sincerely speaking, sincerely speaking, it's an appeal to the demands of the protesters. <laughs> Protesting is a right. You know, and I, I, I commend them. Right. So let's, let's also have uh, Mr. Sunday. I can see the smiling. <laughs> yeah. But again, another angle to it. Do you feel like the protest was effective? Did he eventually change anything? It's effective. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely effective. Okay. Like you said, yeah. Effective. And then more, uh, more interestingly, the president thought he could use it me and the police to stop the protest, but that failed. And that failed generally, and it's obvious that you 
cannot suppress a hungry and angry man. All right? So you can't force people to accept what is unacceptable. And that is a long, that's a, the message they have sent. Look, Nigerians have become wise. Nigerians have become civilized. It's a level of democratic civilization. Now, students are getting more civilized democratically. Unfortunately, the elites are not. Yeah, good enough. The president was very responsive. Which is good or very commendable. Commendable. He wasn't responsible. No, he was responsible. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. speech. Yeah. 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 Yes. From important rights, and those were interventions that were even ahead of the protest. Okay, to stop the protest. Yeah, even, yeah, even before the Senate mobilization, he came up with that. But how effective was that implementation? Up to today, there's no grain of rice on the street, you know, coming from that policy. Yes, so that was a responsive, a, a, a proactive response to the, the, to the common um, protest. Again, it, it didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> Now, after some days, he came out to make a broadcast, which was also unsatisfactory. Mm. Okay, so but Nigerians have sentiments. But if the president had good advisors, I think the disaster was the speechwriter. It was a bigger disaster. Who told him would have written that speech? So I think there was a combination of failure for that aspect. You know, there, you know, it's a combined failure. You know, so there was a combination of failure. Didn't go through the script before. No, I think they were also writing his mind because because his speech was a bit different from his thinking. No, no, no. Yeah, it was it was a speech. You know, so let's not give it away. But the point that there was also, I think, the response was poor. You know, even though there was a proactive. Because when you now say, because when you now say you have withdrawn tariffs, you have withdrawn labor, and all those things, the next thing for you and to the do, people are not feeling any of they, they, they don't feel the impact. So the next thing we would have done, even before the process, or as soon as the process started, started we put the land borders within 24 hours. Trucks of trucks of rice will arrive in Lagos from Cotton here. And they will do it. Be sure that you come out for some for the people. So now we have made policy, uh, policy pronouncement that will take years to be implemented. And now people, the democratic bottlenecks are also there to begin to give you guidance about all that. So the president wasn't, uh, how do I say, rational enough to say this is an urgent intervention to bring, you know, to relieve the people of the hardship and also, you know, pacify them. All right. Okay, so now coming back to. Um, the things that the former president has said in the media, and I think one of the key speech he made that was basically almost all the papers was the fact that he said Nigeria is sitting on the gunpowder mm -hmm. and it could explode at any Sorry. point in time. Yes, and then I think he also spoke about the mentality, the mindset of well, our leaders. leaders that it needs to be worked on. You know, and I think he also said something about the the present government is not continuing from what he's where he stopped in other words that but so gentlemen let's 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 talk about this i mean we already know that i mean the hash the hashtag for the protest was end by governance which obviously means that there's there's an error somewhere you know in governance in nigeria but do you also agree with the president that it also has to do with the mindset it's of our leaders it's absolutely and are they ready to actually work on it
going out of days. Let's, let's that will go into the account and talk the money. <laughs> because you know what? If you want to reform the local 
local government, if you actually want to reform the local government, first and foremost, the election at the local yeah, level um, must yeah. change. It's yeah. a situation where you appoint state uh, uh, um, electoral commission board, commission, you nominate, you do this and all that. Well, the day before election, because this, I'm speaking from, I have the facts. The day before election, the results are out. They give the local government, um, the, the state resident electoral commission um, chairman, this is last election, before 12, they have the results are out. I'm proud of In my state, I'm telling the truth. So, from there, I say, okay, let's get it from there first. The same day, they're doing national election. Let's do federal, states. What happened on the same day? We may not contain it 100 percent but we <coughs> see Same day, not presidential today, tomorrow government. That's where this <laughs> manipulation comes from. Okay, let's 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 have with the with the subject the discussion. Yeah. A lot. The mindset of the leaders, you know, and they're also looking at the after effects of this protest. Yeah, I, I think Mr President uh, the former President he spoke very clearly on, on that aspect. And even before now he has been talking about value rearmament of political leaders in this country. Wow. Now, since he left office, Nigeria has got a system that rewards crime at all times. All right? No matter your crime record, you will still find a place in the government of Nigeria. Every rule governing criminality do not apply in most instances. And I think that is where Mr. Prince is coming from. Mm. Now, when Obasanjo was president, if you remember, the Minister of Education, he gave 50 million naira for them to approve budget of the Minister of Education. The following day, Obasanjo, for example, sacked him. You get it? If you also look at the former president, you see the level, he created ESCC, he created ICPC, he created NPC, NMPC. You see creativity in him, leadership creativity in the Obasanjo. Okay, in, in the mind of Obasanjo. So our leaders should be creative. But since he have not got that kind of creative president in Nigeria, the facts are there. Now, only in Nigeria will a senator be prosecuted in court, found guilty, and sent to prison. He will earn his salary from the prison. Okay? And when we ask questions in the media, the senior president will tell you, oh, either he's on appeal, or they will give excuses. You can imagine a prisoner, because they're a senator, will be earning salary and allowances from prison. What kind of mindset, what kind of leadership is that? Do you get it? So there is no morality, no ethics in the governance system. And I think that is what Mr. Prince is saying. Now the political elite now come to Ghana the national resource, national wealth, and continue to share it among themselves. Then they will abandon citizens. Then what do you expect? You are going to have a collapsing system. All right? I read a report in Guardian some few days ago during the week. We will say that in the present administration that of the, now, the, uh, the annual budget, that more funds have gone into state house than have gone into the ministries and departments. More allocation, budgetary allocation, have been assigned to the state house, than the presidential office, than to the ministries and departments. And then when I look at the figures, it's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Okay? So, until they realize, the portfolio, they realize that Governance is full work for problem solving and not for wealth acquisition for, uh, for state actors. Then that keg of gun power that former President Basel was saying, we're going to explode. I explained this fear in the last in the administration of uh, former President Buhari, and I said that Nigerians may not tolerate the next president. Mm. They tolerated the past one. Nigerians are going to be impatient because the suffering, the hardship has kept increasing. Well, I think they've been Allowed it last for almost a year. At least that was a grace period. <laughs> that was a grace period. <laughs> so they were expecting change yeah. to come. They were still giving Yeah, mm -hmm. they were expecting change to come. Mm -hmm. But the change didn't come. Mm -hmm. didn't come. And now people have to take mm -hmm. the move by the arm. You, you know, part of what um, the, the former president also said was 
fact that um, the people occupying the public offices in Nigeria are uh, they lack character to leave the country and they should be behind bars. So when you look for them, so you could merge it all. Okay. So I'm also thinking that is this not like a Nigerian issue? Because now we are, it's easy for us to pinpoint and say, oh, the people are, are, you know, are, are the leadership position are corrupt, they are being selfish, they are being greedy. But if we want to look amongst ourselves, at some point it feels as though any Nigerian that might even just be picked from the street mm -hmm. and put on that position, it feels like it's this garment you wear on and you're initiated mm -hmm. into wanting mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Aha! Mm -hmm. So don't you think this mentality that the president is talking about is also supposed to be a national issue, not just for the leadership? Yeah, it's a national issue. And that's why we're calling for reform. In non sector, electoral reform, most essentially. Yeah. When you are voted, you, you come. You appeal to your people to vote for you, for instance, as a senator or a governor. And you're going to go through the rigors of campaign, the promises that I will do this. They'll give you their demands, the, the, the expected, expectation, expectations submit to you. You're listing it down. And you're convincing them too that when I get there, I will do this for you. Yeah, you yes. And then the the electoral umpire itself is transparent, transparently picked. You know, it's not just say, picking politicians and putting them at, uh, you know, at our electoral at, at electro commission. That's where another problem. So when you campaign based on ideology and the time comes for people to vote and their vote actually counts and you elect. Because you know, they have the power to record. When all this is, that's why at times I said, I'm not practicing democracy or civil law. I think we're going to, you know, because some of them are being bored. Because you know, we don't have to the it of democracy. We, we cherry pick. If you practice real democracy, you'll be accountable to the people. And when you get in there, you'll be careful because they have the power to record you. What you think you can maneuver your way through, you'll come back to them for re election and they will wait for you there. So that's when they start listening to you. And our mindset, our mindset will be shared in that direction. Because you know you need them as much as they need you to do those things correctly for them. So when you fail, no problem. <laughs> no problem. You do this for us, don't forget I'm in office now. Or you buy your seated vehicles, you don't you no longer stop to greet them, to familiarize with them, to act about their coping with their economy. No problem. They try to see you, you don't see you shield them, and not tell them I'm not available. You are the number in yeah. the office. No problem. Election will come. So until you get to that level. So you need a lot of things to be wrong. The, the electoral system, the system, the Nigerian system as a whole, need a you know, a routine, a retooling. Once you do that, all those things will fall in place. Just yes, also put the right piece on, on the board. Everything will shape it. It's simple. We know, as I said before before I started, I said we know the problem is the problem. Solution to a problem is the ability to follow it up, apply it. You know, follow it sequentially and apply it without looking at faces. If we do that, all say it's a matter of time. The, end, the last protest tends to, you know, these are issues, you know, it tends to point out. Because we're doing the right thing. Our elected officers or appointees of government, they feel they don't know what they're so can go ahead. They talk to the talk to the people. This is the first thing I'm saying. They won't worry. Occasionally, have no chance. News news stations occasionally were able to work an in interview with him. You know? Even if it was on our point stop the media chat. We must speak to the people. We send surrogates to people to you know, you undermine them when you do that. You don't value them. What does it take to speak with you if you like, let them let them even like Jesus. You want to hear something. But let them go and Jesus. Let people ask you questions. It's a real deal, man. That's been good before. I don't know what changed. Seriously speaking, I don't know. Maybe something happened that you know, <laughs> There's something that's exactly wrong yeah. because the thing we know before is so you know, if you want to talk to people, suddenly they're shielding me. Yeah. It's so fair. <clears throat> people want to hear the press and we did not vote for chief of staff. We did not vote for S or media. Yeah. We did not vote for chief president. We didn't vote for these people. Or Minister of Information. These are his appointees. Nigerians want to hear the president. 
that's 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 all right. All right. Let's have Mr. Sunday's last words while we move. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, to an extent, it might not be a national issue, phenomenon, so to say. Like he cited, when Tim was governor of Labour State, he saw his relationship with the media, his relationship with the people. You know, he's naturally grassroots people, a person. But now, in a different case, you know, quite often, quite often, yeah, it's quite a bigger cap. One, then two, there has been always this entrenched interest in the Nigerian government. The inner circle that determines what a leader does or what he does not do. And by the time you call, it's either you comply with what they are asking you or you are at the yeah, Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That since after Obasanjo, we never had a president. When Obasanjo was there, he could bring everybody to his knees, both nationally and internationally. He wear that influence. So that is when you test the capacity of the president. You test the capacity of someone that would say he to be the president of Nigeria. It's number one. But quite often we neglect this before we go to the electoral process. So once that entrenched interest is there, and once you they they, they, they catch you, you are finished. You can't just make an impact, right? So when you know you don't have the capacity, you have to test check your capacity. I want to put the president. Now let me tell you, it's not general attitude. Those who speak the truth from the inside, the system has to work punishing them. I'm not giving instances. Look at Mr. Jibril, the former member of the House of Reps. When he thought that there was budget cutting, the suspended him. In subsequent election, when he won, they said, oh, they went to the court, he was frustrated. Former state president of the Senate, Saraki Adugara, when they managed a national assembly that were checking the president, they said, oh, they were bad politicians. Subsequent elections, they frustrated them. Look at what is happening to Alin Dume. Said Alin Dume. Now he's going from the back. Look at the other, uh, the, uh, what's it, senator. When who raised the issue of budget padding? They suspended him, he had to come back and all that. So the system has a way of frustrating people who speak truth from within. So it's about the political elite, it's about state actors. Has very little to do with it's not a general thing. So what kind of leader are you? What kind of president are you? Are you the president that have the capacity to say no to this? We must move the country forward. Because of Bassanjo has that capacity, that is why he's still talking. I'm not too sure that any other former president could come and talk to the person. He, he said it himself that like, when he stepped down, no one continued from no, That's what we say, saying, yeah. Himself. Exactly. He, he said it. You know. He's the only one so far. So. <laughs> All right. So um, <laughs> we just hope that uh, the, the people at the top, the political uh, leaders, would actually come up and listen to the voices and cries of the people, you know, and do all they need to do. 